Welcome, my friends, on a Monday afternoon at 5 o'clock. Today, we're broadcasting from Cinco de Mayo on the 5th of May, and we're in Cholula Poblano, Mexico. And look yeah. at the background yeah, here. Look at Why that. do we have to be in Woburn, Massachusetts, when we can be anywhere in the, in world? the world? Look at this, look Mexico. At that. And that's, uh, I, I, I had a map, and I want you people to know, this is about 30 or 40 miles south of Mexico City. And I think my history, history tells me that Mexico City is one of the highest points in the whole country of Mexico. It's very it, high up in the air. And uh, that's why they have good uh, soccer there, because it's just like Denver. It's so high, they get the air. It's thin. Those are Mexican girls are beautiful. Eh? Oh, they're beautiful, yeah. And the yeah. drinks are good. Everything oh, yeah. is good about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. A few and margaritas. Then, and then where do you see what the weather is? Why, Jennifer, put the weather up there. The weather in Mexico is just perfect. Look at this. 83, 80. Yeah. They know how to do oh. the weather there. But a few thunderstorms in the meantime. Yeah, that's all right. I like those 80s. And yeah. 77. Is it ever going to be 70 over here? I don't know. <laughs> You know oh, yeah. what bothers me more about the weather we have is the wind. Yeah. It's just the wind all day long. Yeah. The wind is blowing. The wind is blowing. Plus the little right. heat. The heat's still popping on. Oh yeah! In the morning I come down. Uh -huh. I almost had a heart attack this morning. Uh -huh. I come downstairs. It was the heat's on. I said, "Wait a minute." Uh -huh. I was going to yell at her for touching the thermostat, but then I said, "I better shut up." Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's good. Now, the census forms that you have to have in, or they might take your name off the voting rolls. Now, I've missed a couple of times, in, and I've had my name taken off. And I thought they uh, wouldn't take me off, but they did. And, uh, and then you have to, you have to uh, go downtown to the clerk's office, and they give you a note Good. Yep. saying that you, that you, you registered. So send the form back in. What do they do now? The, the ninth. This the ninth. Huh? Do the ninth. The ninth. So I think today's that's the what, fifth. Friday. Today's the fifth. Yeah. yeah so I so think that's Friday. So you have Friday. to you have to have it in. And maybe if you mail it, I don't know how quickly they. Well, need there's it, a box. Uh, I think there's a box in the city clerk's office that you can just go in and drop it in. If you, you know, yeah. I'll put save it in that the stamp. Mail. I don't think I said the name. What was? What did I say? We said how we pronounce that. Chalala. Chihuahua, something like Chihuahua, Pebla, Mexico. I should have studied my Spanish a little bit better before we got here. All right, let's go. License commission, non-compliance with Victor's, Common Victor's license. You have to have that if you're going to yes. cook on the premises. They if they don't have it, close them. They can close them. They can. I mean, uh, well, I mean, I how think, many are you going to close? I looked, there was a list of names yeah, in the paper. I, saw them. I mean, there's some pretty good sized restaurants yeah. there. So I, if you went downtown Woburn and you closed Dunkin' Donuts, they'd all pay up in about a minute. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> have the Port of Health put a sign up there. This no is a permit. constant thing every year. They have to chase them, the, the, what they call a Vic, common Vic license. Yeah. But, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's like your driver's license. What's it cost, 20 bucks uh, or no, something? No, I think it's I mean, maybe 125 that's not, It's not no, a big no, price. No. But um, it's not, you know, it's just, a, you know what it is? It's another administrative a thing for the license board when they should be really looking at other things. You know, you understand? The, the license the board, they should hire me. I mean, they, they bring in a lot of money there. They could hire you and go, you could go around checking all the permits. Yeah, that's a good idea. No, you have no employees. No, just me. Uh, They're the same as the city council. Give me 10% of what I bring in. Yeah, that's right. Okay. They'd be willing to do that. I think I'll the city that council gives special permits. They don't have anybody check and see who, if they... You give a special permit to a guy. How many special permits you give out when you were on the council? Thousand. Yeah. So does anybody ever check to see if the dumpster's in the right place? No. No. So. No. Unless you have employees to go check and after you get, don't give the permits. That's why. That's what I think. But that's never going to happen. So. All yeah. right. After a thirty-three, three hundred thirty-three thousand dollar cut. The fiscal year 15 school budget plan, officials say enough funds remain for contract talks. I, I don't want to get into uh, Mr. Elia's business, but the, the, the school budget, where they find this, they always seem to find some money laying around somewhere, I don't know. 
you know, <laughs> I, don't know uh, that, I don't know how that works you know you know? I know I, I had the same when I read that first of all you and I said to you a couple of weeks ago when that cut was made by the school committee uh, for union negotiations or raises I said that's going to be a problem yep. and then all of a sudden a week goes by and they find three hundred and thirty three thousand dollars more then the cut was 333. So if you add 333 and 333 is 666. And that reminds me of the devil. The devil. The yeah. devil, 666. That's right. That's right. But I want to say, the mayor gave them a figure. 4%. 4%. Now, just think if the police come in with four, and the fire department come in with four, and public works come in with four. Uh, I'm losing the concept that education takes precedent over everything. Everything. No, I believe it doesn't. Do we want to educate our children? Certainly we do. But 4% is a pretty good raise. On? On, on 48 million to, Some would you say know, 50 for round figures. You know, so I think John Wells had it. I watched the school committee. I think John Wells had it exactly. He said, we should give, the budget should be what the mayor asked for. I mean, that's what he said. We should not be sending it down with this extra money in it, which is about a half a million dollars. He said, we should have it exactly what the mayor, and you know what? I agree on that because all you're doing is like, here, Mike Mulrennan's father died, you know, yep. and, and he was an alderman, he was a, a gentleman. So I, I want to be kind to the Mulrennan family, which I will be and am. But Mike Mulrennan used the fluff and peanut uh, butter and fluff. No, he, I wrote it down when he <laughs> fluff he used stuff. it, and I said, you know, fat and fluff. Yeah. He used the term fat and fluff. Yeah. Now listen, if you can find three hundred thirty-three thousand in a in a matter of three or four days. Get the budget down to what the mayor asked for. If the taxes go up, we don't blame the school committee. We blame the mayor and the city council. That's right. They're responsible. And so I would say to the mayor, I hope you hold firm to what you uh, asked them to give you. And I hope the city council does too. I think 4% in this day and age is more than sufficient. And if you say we're against education, oh, you're against... We've built, look at these schools, look at this school I'm sitting in. And we got a new Wyman and, 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 and the Hurl School coming. coming. Give us a break now, yep. a break. Uh, one thing I kind of want to put a heads up on. When you see an assistant principal in an elementary school, now we all know the Reeves School is far exceeding its population. That's right. But if you say, well, we need an assistant there, watch out. Because I'm one that believes there'll be an assistant asked for in, in every, every elementary school. school. And, uh, you know, so I, I just think we're getting overtopped with administrators, top heavy. You know, if you said, no, there's some teachers there, take a look at the list of what they're adding. There's a lot of uh, uh, administrators. So I hope the mayor holds for him. Really the, the, the background on the mayor is that he tells him to bring me this number, and then if you run short, I'll see if I can't He's come up with it. He's helped in the past. past so. You know, so why would you want to have some confrontation with the mayor? I don't know. You know why? Give him what he asked for. He's never refused to fix your roof or do this. He's never, he's never denied you anything that you could prove that was a necessary over and above what he gave you. That's so... Right. Um, I think you should think about putting the figure to what he asked for. I do too. 3.5 million purchase installation. <clears throat> the money was put up for buying water meters. I thought they already bought the water meters. But anyway, the money's there. That we, bought, we own the water meters. Neptune Company is yeah. manufacturing the water meters. And a company called Thurlish Engineering out of Rhode Island is, is going to do the installation. Now, that's, uh, <clears throat> that bond issue, Eddie, was $6 million. Right. And so this is almost 50%. Everybody seems to be... Uh, but uh, that we'll should do, what's a little left is the, the, these little incremental little things yeah, well, that we might don't, happen on we, each individual yes. house. You might have a little problem with, uh, we'll call it, the dead end of a house on, yeah. the, 
uh, uh, not so much copper pipe, but might be galvanized yeah. and has to be changed. So there'll be a little, a little changes in some of the houses. Not too many not of the new many. houses are pretty so. much all yeah. set copper. So, uh, but everybody seems to be very happy with that bid price. You know, yeah, because they did, comp they thought it was going to be five million, five one million, time, yeah. four to five. So uh, this amount of money that's left over will go into the water sewer enterprise Price fund. fund. Yeah. We're familiar we with need, that. We fund. need more enterprise fund. That's what we need, really. <laughs> All right, the licensing commission here's a beer and wine request for Adega. And now that is a new restaurant. If you live in the South End, you probably remember. The Callahan's was there at the, uh, where Easy Way Cleaners is. He was there for a short period of time, maybe a year or two. And then he got, went out of business. And now this company's there, and I understand it's uh, basically a Portuguese-type uh, menu. And so they got the last of those eight beer and, wheel, uh, uh, beer beer and wine. wine licenses. So uh, let's hope. That's, always, that's been a vacant uh, spot there for a long time, so let's we'll get that filled up. It's a pretty busy area right through there yeah. for people who live in the South End. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But the, now there's no more of those beer and wine licenses That's left. That's it. A letter to the editor, the mayor's current pay by Ellen Purrington, Robinson Road. Yeah. She wants him to get the raise right now. I don't want him to get it right now. I don't want him to get the raise at all. I said this last week, he went there. You were in Central Square getting fighting the lottery and the, and, the, and the gambling. But anyway, I want the system fixed. I want, if, if this Mrs. Rye, uh, Mrs. whatever parent and her name is, parent. if she, I want her to ask the next guy that's banging on the door and wanting to be on, if he says, I'm, not, I'm against raising taxes, you can't give up people raises unless you raise taxes. You can, I don't know where the money's supposed to come from. They're giving them a raise. Well, um, but I mean, where's the money? The money? Where's the money? Well, we, we these have, guys say I'm not going to raise taxes. Well, what, 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 what can we, we, do? we have a we have a what we call new assessments. So, new assessments. Yeah, and uh, that's how we've been holding our own up till this present time on the current tax rate of, because we have we have some pretty good new buildings going up. But I would think that we've we don't see too many now. All you know. of the raises, the amount of money, turn around because everybody's afraid to give an administrator a raise. So it goes on for 10 or 12 years, you don't get a raise. And then all of a sudden, to catch up, you have to get these kind of raises. So if the, I, don't, I don't know how you do it because I'm not in favor of, uh, of saying you should get 2% raise every couple of years because you might not be doing a good job, you might raise taxes too high, it will kick you out. Mm. So you maybe don't get a raise. But there has to be a better way to do it more incrementally than after having it this way. He's got to wait two years before the raise kicks in, and then it comes in at what, $10,000? Yeah. It, it's kind of a... a, a I thought it should have started July the 1st of this year, something anyways, but uh, the council adopted. Well, I think they all have the same idea. Yeah. I mean, the, the two women who have... Uh, who have written to the Times saying that they think he's done such a wonderful job that he should get the raise right now. I think a lot of people, I might agree with that myself. It's the system, I don't like the system. Because they'll knock on your door and say, hey, my name is Ed Walker and I'm running for Alderman and I'm against raising taxes. I'm not against spending money, I'm against this, I'm against that. But then you get in office and you turn around and give a guy a big raise. Would, what would you rather have it seen uh, like a 1% uh Every year or something like that. Something if, like that, but I don't without, know how without you can having, keep up. Without having it. Because all that's going to happen is the human resources lady, a man, whoever gets the job, if the job uh, I think it should gets be refilled. Yeah. All right, I, I, that's fine. I don't have any problem with that. But I, all they're going to do is go out and take a survey again. They go out and say, well, the, 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 the Winchester town manager makes 150 grand a year. Well, the, the Winchester Town Manager is a different deal than a city of Woburn. Yeah. And he was former mayor of Malden, that yeah. guy. So, yeah. I mean, he's got a, a, a resume, you know. So it's a, it's a difficult thing, but I, I'd rather have it straightened out somehow before you have, you have to turn around and give out these big kind of raises. too complicated. So we'll see what happens. All right. All right. 
Ruben Truck and Auto, little progress made in plans and committee. This will just go on and on and on and on. I don't think they're going to, I, I think I, I read where they might have a meeting, but they weren't going to invite the parties. No, they, they wouldn't, I mean, uh, Mr. Holland or Mr. Tarby, Attorney Tarby, was not going to be invited. And now, you know. What's I, the I, point, though? I mean, if you're going to have a conversation. Eddie, let me say this. I went to that meeting. Yep. And I spoke at that meeting. And I saw you speaking. I want to say this. Uh, Mike Raymond's a good alderman. Yep. And he represents his ward uh, to the best of his ability. He does a good job. Yep. But on this particular issue, I think he's on the wrong side here. And I think that uh, from what I've seen and read, it's becoming more personal than it is the issue. And for whatever reason, uh, Mike, I don't know why. But certainly, you can't call this a neighborhood. You can't call it a residential neighborhood. You cannot do that. And if you really felt that you want to make it this a residential neighborhood, then you could have submitted a zoning change and change it. Take the IG out of there. The IG was put in there for a reason, because to try to get the businesses that were there to put them in a zone that they could stay there. So um, I, I, I don't know where this is going to end up going. I think the legal minds of the city, I read the city solicitor's yeah. report, and she kind of felt that he was there by right in so many words. Tabby's done a lot of research on different cases. Uh, I happen to think uh, that Holland has done a, a marvelous job in what was there before him, as far as just the uh, the cleanliness and the, just the it's it's like the I mean I used the term was the like place. the ninth yeah. ninth fairway of the country club yeah. from what I remember, but and he's going to put up an eight foot wall and then a six foot fence with screening on the fence. I mean, he'll. Uh, I just, I, I think they, they got to find, like, the middle of the road. Somebody's got to find the middle of the road, and you can't find it if you say, I don't want him coming to a meeting that I have. I, um, I'm, I'm just old-fashioned enough to think that in, in the changes of uh, the cities, the way the cities and towns are, you, you, they manufacture a billion cars a year. You That's know, why we got them stored after, all the way. We got them stored all over the place. Right. So you <clears> have <throat> to have a place for the old cars to go. So you got to recycle. This recycling, you know, they recycle the tires, they recycle the batteries. They don't. It's not like in the olden days. Everybody had a junk car in the backyard. You know, you have sure. to get rid of them right away. Yeah. So you know, there's a there's a there's a place for that kind of a business now. If, they, if the people of the city of Wilburn think that they want to be like Winchester and you're not going to have that in business, but I think going back to the, the working man's community, it's always been the Wilburn truck pot since I can remember. Uh, and me too. And it, so it's always been uh, like a junkyard. I bought transmissions there myself off of uh, Laurie Robbins. So you, 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 you just have to say that it's part of the way that business is done these days. And, I think in this particular case, we're fortunate to have a location that is near the old dump, where there's a mountain there yeah. anyway. We, we, the neighbors are all on contaminated land in Wilmington. You know what I mean? Yeah, so oh, I, oh. it's not a great no, piece of I, property. No, I, I, you know, when you and think I did what you said. I went up there and rode around, and I, it's hard to see houses I, from I, there. I, I'm telling tell you, it's Eddie. You're dealing with a Wuben guy now. Some might say, don't say that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say it. Yeah. Because I think that a Wuben guy that lives in Wuben and pays taxes here in Wuben and has quite a bit of real estate in the city, you can talk to him. And the, the, I'm so, that kind of bothers me that nobody's reached out and talked to him. He, he will cooperate and he, he wants his business. It is his business. Somebody's trash is somebody else's treasure. treasure. That's right. And, you know, I thought Mike kind of clouded this issue a little bit by bringing in Bill Ricca, saying the DEP fined him $180,000. That is not so. He, they did try to find him. He appealed it, and it's under appeal, and, and there's been no 
no final action on that in over pretty close to four years. And so to bring that into the issue, I, I think was wrong because this land here has been approved by the DEP. Yeah. Um, and as you and I know, uh, we've got Mount Misery behind us there. Yeah. And that was created for a million dollars uh, payment for the big dig material under Bob Dever when he was mayor, and we got a million dollars in headaches. Uh, but we're going to have a cover with yeah. sign things and well, be a big deal. Who knows? Who, who knows? knows? But uh, it certainly, if it was level, it would be that would be another valuable piece of property if it was level, Eddie. Yeah. You know? Yep. Uh, it might be level someday. Some archaeologists will go in there and grind yeah. that stuff up and haul it all away and recycle it. So anyways, I, I just hope that they there. can find a happy medium. I just do. I, I but it, it's not good. residential. I'm telling you right now, it's not residential. It is not residential. Would uh, you have paid $4 million for the country club building? I would have bought it tomorrow if it was a back of the art form. I, I looked at that, and I had in my mind between 8 and $12 million. Really? Yeah. And um, when I saw that figure, I think that's bigger than the Brinks robbery. Really? Yeah. I think the guy did very well there. I think $4 million for a six-story office building that's is pretty that's good. A, I think that's pretty that's good. A buy, so he, that's a buy. He, I helped he went down to 99 and had a stake after he got the bid there because I think that's a pretty good deal. And the other thing, when I went over there, to, I went over there for a couple of reasons. I wanted to go in by the country club and see how things were at the golf course. I looked at the building. It's always looked the same. It's a very yeah. Tr yeah. Kind of, uh, uh, crazy looking building. It's a square building, yeah. six stories high. And I took a good look at the kid that's fixing the Mercedes Benzes in the yeah, gas he's station. He's doing a good job. Now he? he's, he's got a nice looking little building yeah. there. You know, it looks like he had uh, three or four cars in there. Yeah. I don't know he's how a good, many. He's a good so guy. Well, I met him good. doing all that process. So that whole <clears throat> that whole situation probably is going to change around a little bit right there in that corner. So that's all good. No, I, I think that, uh, I suppose Al Carlin rolled over when he heard that. <laughs> yeah, $4 million, well, dollars, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Because he built that, so. It. But I wish Mr. Martin any well. Um, yeah. Yeah. I see who has, oh, that's who bought it. I'm not Nate. I'm not Nate, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Biscata, why don't we watch rain for a minute and see what's going on in the sports in the city while Paul and I collect our breath? It's so hot here in Mexico. No. We're, we're so me. used to being in, uh, I gotta in get Wilbur to, where it's windy. And, I should have uh, brought, I should have wore my bathing suit. Yeah, you should have. I know it. I could have worn the flip flops. Hello folks and welcome once again to sports. As always, I'm your host Ray Newcomb and today we will be looking at two topics which were big in this weekend sports. First we hit the ice where the Boston Bruins played their first game in the series with the Montreal Canadiens. The Habs came out early with the first goal coming in the first period. However, defensive issues on the part of the Canadiens allowed the Bees to tie the game not once but twice. This would not be enough though as the Habs walked away with a 4-3 victory. The second game of the series was played on Saturday with both teams hungry for a win. The Habs came out confident and carried a lead into the third period, but just when it looked like all hope was lost for a Bruins win, the Bees charged back, scoring an unprecedented four third period goals to beat the Habs 5-3. This was just yet another chapter in what is sure to be an exciting and unpredictable series. Elsewhere on Saturday, a battle of epic proportions took place in the desert oasis of Las Vegas as Marcos Maidana took on boxing's main attraction, Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather's 45-0 record and almost godlike presence made this fight seem like a no-contest win for Floyd. However, Maidana had a few tricks up his sleeve. Marcos came out fast, quickly diminishing Mayweather's confidence and putting him on the ropes with a volley of quick punches and body blows in the early rounds. But as the fight wore on, Maidana began to tire as Mayweather's endurance began to show its usefulness. The fight remained consistent with no one clear champ until the final bell of the 12th round, when a victor was decided by a panel of three judges. After moments of seemingly endless suspense, the decision was in favor of the king. Floyd was able to keep his title and another victory was added to his impressive 46-0 record. Well, that's all for today, folks. For sports, I'm Ray Newcomb. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of the show. 
Good to have you back. Good, good, good job, Ray. You'll be gone pretty soon, that kid. Be out of school. Is he a senior this year? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. In the cot. In the cot. Wow. Nice. Oh. All right. Let's see. Where were we here with Mrs. Hearns? Big list here of stuff. We got the, well, so we skipped that. We already did that. You did the budget. All right, West Wolburn proposal. Yeah. I don't. I, I. I didn't get to see uh, Mr. Uh, Chambers. Chambers' uh, plea, but it seemed to me that if he was gonna, he's gonna use that whole building now. He's gonna have cars delivered there, prepped there, and delivered out into his agency. So uh, it's really just for the Hondas, but there, there could be other cars there. But it's yeah. the main thing is for the Hondas in Burlington. But on prepping the car is this, is uh, setting the uh, computer, uh, checking the battery and the lights, taking that protective covering off. Yeah, they the got hood skin on it. Yeah. They peel those off. Yeah. And um, getting them ready for sale. That's all. That's about all it is. They're brand new cars. There's no used cars. It, what, what, what was the argument of the the people who don't want them there. Uh, they just thought 500 cars, which he was a, I mean, I took it, he, he spoke, Chambers spoke, he was very, uh, I thought, agreeable to some questions from the alderman. He'd reduce that. If they want it down, I'll, I'll use a figure 350 or 400, and he'll uh, reduce the hours uh, on the Sundays. Um, they didn't want those cars, cars parked there. You know that amount, but I mean, if if we had a company come to, I forget the name of it, Seal Coat, uh, you know, yeah, the top uh, company up yes. in Rock Woburn. Yeah. So I mean, if 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 a company like that came over there and wanted to rent that space, would they have to? Would it be no, because it's non-conforming. Non I mean, non-conforming. This calls for. Sp could they rent the space? Yes, yeah. with a special permit. Right. Oh yes. So uh, I mean. <clears throat> what, 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 the building is there. It's a commercial building. There's yeah. always been there. The yeah. telephone company, the Edison. The city was going to be there. Yeah, city bonds. Right. So, I mean, that building, I mean, it's not, never going to be an apartment house. Um, I don't think so, but the apartments beside it, towards uh, Tudor to Glen, I think it is, towards the Joyce, they, were, they're, they are against what the Chambers wants to do. Um, I... I well, would they would they want to buy it? Well, I don't know, but I can't say that. So, but I mean, that's it. Would, it uh, has to go one way or the other. I mean, uh, you can't can't leave it like it is. See, it was there. It was bef it's it was there before the master zoning in 1970. It was there? Do you understand? Yes, so the Edison time. was non-conforming, yeah. and they've remodeled that building a couple of times. Nice, yeah, uh, they had bays on one side. Now they got bays on both sides. Um, there was a hundred pieces in there, maybe a little more when Verizon was in there. Yep. Uh, I, uh, what I got out of it in this, um, we've got some good dealerships in Woburn, Lawless, uh, Olson Cadillac, Lannan Chevrolet, Woburn Foreign Motors. Those are all good companies yep. in Woburn. They're very supportive of our city. Um, is there room for Herb Chambers? I would think so. Because Herb Chambers is a big player on that he's stage. A, he's a big, big <clears throat> deal. Now, during the, this discussion, that it came out that he looked at the W.R. Grace property, and uh, he also, the, where the other dealership uh, on the hill there, oh, where Mayor Lannan was on the hill? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, General Motors. He was, gave that a little look. I suggested at the public hearing maybe look at Charette. Right on 128. Right, yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I think if this, he wants Woburn. Now, does he want this location over here? He wants it for the for this immediate reason, to store new vehicles there. But he wants a dealership in Woburn, and that came out during the hearing. So I have a tendency to think if we can uh, break bread with him here a little bit. And maybe we can get him in Woburn. Uh, again, I think there's two or three locations that he would fit right into. When we were children, which was not long ago, <laughs> we do had a, a, a deal of sold Chevrolets like Landon. For, and Ford. Acres Herb and Ford. Chambers sells every kind car. of car there we, is. 
Yeah. He has every dealership. You got it. Exactly. So there's not that. I don't know how that loyalty business gets in because he's he um, can't go up there and he can't stand up and say run down there and buy a Chevrolet or run over here and buy a Honda. You know he sells all different kinds of cars. Well, I think that if you dealt with him at an agency, whether it's a Chevy agency or a, a Cadillac agency, yeah. he sells Cadillacs or the Mini Coopers. Yeah. He sells those, and you're satisfied with his. Uh, price and his, we'll call it maintenance, uh, you know, uh, I, the guy has cornered the market. No question. And, uh, you know, would he hurt Lannan Chevrolet? I don't, I, I don't think no. so, because people go to Lannan that have been going there for a lifetime. That, that's right. Uh, Olsen Cadillac, I don't think he'd hurt them either because they're going there for a lifetime. Olsen you know? is one of the biggest yeah. Cadillac dealers He's a around. distributor around that's here. Right. Now, we and talk Barnell about... Barnell is the other guy who used to be in right. Rupert, and he might as well be in Rupert. We We talk about cars being stored uh, here. St. Barbara's Church, you see all the yeah. Cadillacs in there. Now, there's no special permit for that. No. And, uh, you know, I happen to be a Catholic, but that doesn't mean it's right. No. Uh, uh, I'm not saying it's wrong, but it doesn't mean it's right. That's right. Uh, Olson Cadillac is there. He would, had some other location. Uh, that he had, I'm trying to think where he was. He was in another location with some cars, and he had to move those. I think it was up off of uh, Commerce Way. Uh, Lawless has cars stored in a couple of locations in Woburn. I mean, <clears throat> you used to walk into Acus and Ford, yep. or uh, Land and Chevrolet, and order a car blue. I want uh, black interior, this, and I take you four months to get it. Yeah, you want a now radio? It, we can get it, yeah, you want a radio or an antenna that goes up? Uh, yeah. So now they can get it from yeah, the yeah. East Overshore. Yeah, yeah, just call up and say the no, guy, we, oh, I yeah, have we it. got one of them. You know, so, I mean, it's a different different business than what it used to be, Eddie, you know? There's no question about it. So, There's no question about it. Uh, we'll see where that goes. I think it's, you know, it's got some possibilities. Community <coughs> Preservation Act. I'm not very big on that. Uh, the residents and the lobbyists stumped for the referendum. Now, the, in, the, in the paper, it said the money used that they saved one percent to three percent. Last time they trade for, tried for three, they went yeah. down the drain. Went down three to one. Right. Or this time they're trying for one. So now it can, this is what they use. It could be used for open space, develop recreational space fix up historical property, and create housing for veterans and seniors. Now, we have groups of people that do all that stuff. You better believe it. So I, I don't know how they're going to uh, get involved in that. It's, uh, let me say this. Yeah, I listened. There's two good people that are there for moving. <coughs> um, Ronnie Finn, I think you know yep. him. And um, I'll think of the other lady's name. Her husband's a police officer. Uh, <clears throat> but in the lobbyists, that bothered me when they bring out a lobbyist from yeah. Boston. Now, there's 354 cities and towns in the Commonwealth. 155 have adopted this 14, for the last 14 years. They never said how many didn't adopt it like Woburn. And when this first started, it was supposed to be on the deed of your property when you conveyed property. Right. Now it's on your tax bill. So let's clarify that now. Yeah. On your tax bill and mine, there's going to be a minimum of 1% increase right. on what the value of your house is. Right. It doesn't mean you have to sell it. If you're assessed at $400,000, they're going to take 100000 off and send you a bill for the 300000 Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, that amount will average $13. Right to as high as 34. Now, veterans we take care of, parks we take care of. Seniors we take seniors care of. Seniors we take care of. Those, that, that's a smoke screen. Open space, we, we got enough open space. Yeah, we just spent, uh, how much between Spence Farm Fine. and West Side? Yeah, and then, uh, right. There was a smoke, there was a mirrors and smoke. They've added things on there so to make you say, oh, I want to do veterans. Yeah. Oh, I want to do the seniors, yeah. we got to take. Listen, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. If the, your tax bill goes up, don't let it say that it was the Preservation Act that did it to you. 
I say to the city council, you want to increase my taxes, you increase it. Be man and woman enough to stand up and say, I'm raising your taxes. That's right. Don't come up with another bureaucracy. You gotta yep. have a committee now, Eddie. We yep. have to create another committee. They'll have to have letterheads. We'll have to pay for mailings. It's, no. I say, N-O, no. All right. You agree on that? I agree, hell yeah. I say no. I, unless they're gonna come up with, have more meetings and discuss it a little open. But I mean, I, there's a duplication, which I'm gonna get to in a minute here uh, on this, uh, on the policy placed on the table, the new fundraising rules are pitched by the school board. Now, they've been kicking this around for about a year. And in the paper, <clears throat> it says, based on the current guidelines, every organization raising money on behalf of the school system needs to appear before the school committee for approval for these events. Because they don't want the kids running up and down the street, knocking on your door, saying, give me a dollar for a candy bar, and then we give the money to the school. And too much paperwork for the principal, and blah, blah, blah. But I thought at the same time, the Wuben Community Educational Foundation, now that popped up about a year ago. Isn't that Joe Crowley and Mid. Isn't and, that doing the same? Yeah, they're going to raise money for the schools. And give it out to uh, the needy, so, yeah. the so needy that, principals. So they're going to be the same <coughs> way. They're going to be up there at the school committee meetings every night. It's the same thing. If you're going to make the rules for our, everybody, has to have the same rules. So the the Woba Community Educational Foundation will have to go through this whole system of raising money. Now, I said this I think last week or the week before. I go around. I talk to a lot of people during the day. And a lot of them are small contractors, small businessmen, like the people in the center. I don't know as many as you do because of the Rural Business Association. But I'm telling you right now, they're getting whacked 100 a day from Boys Club, YMCA, this one, that one, Tata, cancer, breast cancer for this, Relay for Life, all kinds of things. Everybody's hitting them. For a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. You know, the guy says, if I had to give everybody a hundred that calls me in a month, I'd be giving out ten grand a month I to charity. It. He says this, it has to come to some kind of a screeching halt, except for the fact that they're afraid. They, you know, not physically afraid or mentally afraid. They're just kind mm -hmm. of afraid that when you say no, no you, it, you, 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 you know, you can't, it's hard to say no. To, to the to people and, raise their money. And some kids. people on the other side would take that personal and might go down the street and say, look at that guy, uh, whatever his business yeah. is, a name, he didn't give us nothing. Yeah, you so know, I'm not going to shop there. Yeah, anymore. so that's the end of me buying subs yeah. at yeah. that place. So that's not, that's, that's not right. You know. So when you, when you figure it out, like it's even, even for the, for the uh, Community Preservation Act, 1%, I mean, that's more money it comes out. Every, you can't keep going out. You know, I didn't mention in that act too, uh, it, it, there is a, a line in there that says business. Now, the city council can opt. See, when they went to the city council the other night, they didn't have any petitions. No, they, didn't. they haven't done anything yet. They're trying to catch the city council, would, I hope they wake up, to say they supported it. Yeah. If there's a vote taken, they're going to use that. They're going to use it here in this program. They use it on literature. That the city council adopted this for us. I know I'm not wasn't born yesterday. Yeah. Now bring a lobbyist up from Boston. What do you think? She just she come out by train? Yeah. I don't think so. So, anyways, business Eddie is in that act. That's right. And how would you like to have a six hundred thousand dollar tax bill? And pay one percent on it. Yeah. For the preservation. Hello. Yeah. Hello. That's right. Hello. I saw that when you said that about the, I uh, say the Atlantic Joe and the yeah. Cummings or, 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 or whatever, any big business. And what like are you going to say? I didn't do it to you. Yeah. They did it. They to you. did it. Come on. Come on. Yeah. That's right. You know. That's right. It's just another tax. All right. I want you to say a few words about our friend. I, I want first of all, I should preface this by saying. Paul and I have discussed this uh, three or four times. When we started the program, we've been on here for, for like five or six years now, and I, I, what I've tried in the beginning to do is not to get into uh, reading or talking about obituaries. 
because there's so many great people who live in the city of Woburn that we could spend the whole half an hour talking about what great people are. And when they pass away, you should give them some recognition. John McElhenney just pops into my mind uh, sitting here. Yep. Now, we lost a guy this week, a, a favorite of the people of the city of Woburn, Bill Maurer. You, know, you probably know him longer than I have. But I know all his children, they're the same ages as my children. I play golf with him at the country club. He spends a lot of time in charity, Rosie's place. His last endeavor was this uh, uh, mission of deeds. Yeah, a lot of time. You know, just spend all that time helping other people. And God uh, help him, he, he, he's had three or four heart attacks himself. He's probably had the last rites of the church a few times before yeah. this. Yeah. So I just wanted to say that about how we're going to handle some of these things. We'll have to decide as we go along who will get the promotion well, he, and who uh, won't. You know? He was an elected official. So he I was think, an elected official. And, I, and you know That's what? Right. I happen to think that, that for somebody to put themselves in that uh, arena, uh, I well, because... Uh, I hope they've kind of me. <laughs> put yourself in that arena. That takes a little bit of gumption, and you have some feelings, and you you want to uh, make a. Uh, we'll say you want to make a mark, and and hopefully you make the place a better place than what it was yeah. before you got there. So, and then what he's done with that mission of deeds. I'm going to tell you. I called him a couple of times when I had some furniture that I knew that they needed. They came and got it. Um, he he's, he was a. A, a big, and I'm talking about not only going through ads and taking furniture, he would be out there humping it. Yeah, he could, yeah. in the truck. Yep. I mean, you know, and then every meeting that was held at City Hall that the gelatin was brought up about odors or whatever the case may be. Do you know the one guy that was there at every meeting was Bill Marennan. Yep. He worked there for over 30 years. He knew the gelatin like the back of his hand. Yep. Yep. And, uh, you know, every time, and I know that because I was at almost all the meetings, but he was there front and center, and he would get up and speak what he thought about the gelatin. So, you know, hey, hey rest in peace. And his, uh, his wife passed away, I think, yep, what, two did. years ago? Yep. Or maybe. So and he got a mess of seven of them, I think. Yeah. Seven children. Seven kids. Yeah. Of course, Brian is uh, is uh, working over in Cambridge, and uh, the other guy is uh, the school committee yeah. uh, chairman. Is he trying not chairman this particular year? But he's they, they did uh, they did very well. The kid, he's just a good yeah. guy, good yeah. family. You know, um, you have your gang. Yep. Now I don't have the resources that he has on his gang, but I got a small gang. Small gang. And yeah. I got a fellow that approached me the other day, and we couldn't think of. Skyworks. Skyworks. Uh, the the name before, and that name was Alpha. Alpha. And this Industries. guy whispered it in my ear <laughs> and says it's Alpha, Alpha Industries. Industries. That's right. Now, if you read the Times a couple of nights ago, I did. Skyworks just bought another company, company. for a hundred and forty-eight million dollars cash. Something to do with Panasonic. Yeah. yeah they make filters. They just bought that. That's good. 148 million cash. Cash. No so, bonds there. No so, taking back notes. So they must be making money oh, up there in North Uber, huh? We are happy that we got. That's a good. That's. A, I don't have to tell you. It's a great company. If I was 20 years younger, I'd probably go to work. Banging on the door. I'd so go to work. Enjoy. Take me. I'd yeah. go up to see Joe Torres. Yeah, Joe Torres. It's another yeah. famous Uber name. But anyway, hey, here we are in Mexico, and next, yeah. next week, we might be in Ireland next week, because there's a lot going on over there, because I think BC's in a little trouble, but we're going to go straighten it out. All right, next time. Hey, good night.